Hi again, it's Chris Klein, Director of Butterfly Ridge Butterfly Conservation Center here in Southeast Ohio. Uh, hoping you've had a, had a good weekend. Um, as I was thinking about what to talk about for this week's edition, actually the, the highway department kind of helped me out a little bit. If the, I know that probably sounds a little strange, but... Um, but about a week ago, I was driving down our little state highway here, State Route 374. And so this would have been sometime during that first week of February. Once again, the first week of February. And here along the side of the road is the big orange caution sign saying, Mowing Ahead. And of course, what goes through my mind is, what in heaven's name could they be mowing in February? Okay, um, and so that kind of, that gave me this week's topic for our Landscaping for Life series. And that topping it, top, topic, not topping, topic, is um, this whole obsession that we have with mowing, at least here in the Midwest. Um, you know, when we talk about butterflies and of course monarchs, they're always in the news. Uh, but there are several other butterflies that are having, um, you know, population issues, population declines. And normally, 99.9% .9 of the time, that boils down to habitat loss. Well, a part of habitat loss, at least here in the Midwest, is our obsession with mowing. And... Once upon a time, I lived in Indiana. I worked at uh, Minnetrista Cultural Center there in Muncie, Indiana. I was a part of the staff at Oakhurst Gardens. And I used to tease people when I would do butterfly gardening talks and whatnot that I could drive a golf ball from Muncie to Richmond without ever going in the rough. And not because I'm a great golfer by any stretch, but because there was no rough, okay? Uh, in Indiana, even on the little township roads, people mowed the roadsides like they were putting greens. And while Ohio may not be that quite that obsessed, we're close, okay? I mean, after all, here we are mowing in February, okay? Um, here is a couple years ago, and in the little town that we were living in called Sugar Grove, there was a billboard just outside of outside of town and the billboard was by cub cadet and it showed a picture of one of their riding lawnmowers and the caption below was mow therapy okay and i'll be honest i in many instances really that's the only benefit from mowing okay is that it's apparently therapeutic for the person riding the mower. Um, unfortunately, mowing does a whole lot of damage to habitats, okay? I mean, even here at Butterfly Ridge, you know, once upon a time, um, when Dad was in a whole lot better health, he did a lot of mowing. And, yeah, it made, made things look neat and tidy and that sort of thing. And as he got older, it was one of the few things that he could do, you know, outside, one of the few projects he could work on. And I'm sure he didn't realize at the time, but that excessive mowing, the damage that it was doing, okay? Um, because realize many of our butterfly species rely on either those grasses that we're mowing down and not allowing to complete their life cycle or butterflies that rely on the clover that's growing in the lawn or in our case in the fields uh, the pussy toes that is growing in the fields okay so by our frequent mowing here you know, historically speaking, we were doing damage to American lady butterflies who use pussy toes as their host plant. Um, we were doing damage to eastern tailed blues, which use clover as their host plant. And then we were doing damage to some of the different grass skippers. You know, here 
the more common grass skippers, uh, Pex skipper, uh, Zabulin skipper, um, Northern Broken Dash. I mean, we have several skippers, least skipper, that use grasses as their caterpillar host plants. And then, of course, there's also common wood nymph. Um, our two different species of satyrs that we have, the Carolina satyr and little wood satyr, although they tend to stay more in grassy areas that are like right adjacent to the woods. You know, they're more of an edge effect type of a, a species. But anyways, our constant mowing was doing damage to those particular butterfly species. I remember one time one of my coworkers at the conservatory came up to me and she asked me, you know, what are these tiny little blue butterflies that are flying all over her lawn? And so two questions I asked was, um, number one, is there clover in your lawn? And she responded, yes. And number two, you know, how often do you mow your lawn? And she said they rarely mowed the lawn because neither she nor her husband enjoyed mowing. Um, well, what that told me was probably eastern tail blue. Uh, since they use the clover <coughs> and since um, their family didn't mow regularly, that meant that all those little eastern tail blue caterpillars weren't being chopped up every week. You see, that's a part of the damage that you're doing with your mowing. Are these species that use not only the grasses, but the plants like the clover and the pussy tails who that grow up with the grasses, every time you mow, okay, you are chopping up butterfly eggs, you are chopping up caterpillars, you're not just chopping up grass, okay, you're chopping up other stuff too. And so one of the things that I recommend to folks, you know, if you if you live with a spouse that is just totally obsessed with mowing, um, Perhaps you need to set aside a section in the backyard, maybe a, you know, maybe a 20 or 30 foot section in the backyard that you let the grass grow, you let the clover grow, okay? And so that way, at least the eastern tailed blues, the grass skippers do have at least a small little refuge that they can use. Um, if you're one of these folks that not only like your lawn and you like it very well kept and manicured, but you don't like the clover and the dandelions that grow in it, and so you spray chemicals, you apply weed and feed and that sort of stuff, realize you're doing double damage to your butterflies because that weed and feed is going to kill your clover and therefore give your eastern tail blues nothing to feed on when they're caterpillars. Your weed and feed is going to kill your dandelions and believe it or not as we approach spring here I'm very anxiously looking forward to spring winter's gotten quite old quite fast um, as we approach spring realize probably the best nectar plant in your yard in early spring for butterflies is dandelions okay well you go through hit it with the weed and feed okay so you just killed all the clover so you just killed host plants you just killed nectar okay and then usually with weed and feed if I recall normally you mow before you apply it so therefore you mowed ahead of time to kill any caterpillars any eggs any pupa that may already be there okay so um, a lot of folks don't think about the damage that mowing can cause for your local butterfly population and I'll be honest really from a conservation perspective there is no good argument for mowing what I try to recommend to people you know I know a lot of folks you know if we want to talk about fields and whatnot you know well they have to mow at least once a year they have to mow and well if you're one of those people might I suggest that you mow late spring, okay, um, when you start to see the swallowtails flying, okay, when the grasses start to green up and you want to 
take off all that all of last year's brown dead looking stuff that's still out there late spring i would argue would be the best time to do it um, because if you're seeing butterflies then what that means is the butterflies that were pupating out in those old fields they have probably e-closed meaning the butter the adult butterfly has emerged from that chrysalis which makes it safe to mow then um, as those grasses start to green up what will happen is those grass skipper caterpillars will crawl out of the grass stems where they spent the winter and they will migrate down to the bases of the grasses that are starting to green up and start feeding so if you wait until late spring if you set your mower deck fairly high most likely you'll mow right over the top of them um, and you won't be chopping anybody up so once again as we approach this time of year there's certain things that i really like to get folks thinking about and mowing is one of those things okay because we do an awful lot of damage with our mowers so in a lawn type setting you know keep keep a corner of the lawn that you let grow up and the butterflies can use for habitat when we're talking about a field and just for whatever reason you're convinced you have to mow it at least once a year i would argue late spring is the time to do that okay don't wait until fall because then once again you've got all these grass skipper caterpillars getting ready to overwinter in those grass stems you've got a bunch of swallowtail pupa and whatnot hanging off of those perennials out in your field you go through and mow and all you're doing is chop 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 and um, I did want to give a shout out to the Columbus Wild Ones organization, a conservation organization there in Columbus, Ohio, who had me out to speak about a week ago and really enjoyed getting to visit with them, share some of the secrets that we've used here at Butterfly Ridge to triple our butterfly population. Um, here in, uh, let's see, towards the end of February, in fact, it might be the last day of February, if I recall, I'm going to be giving a similar talk at the Public Library in Logan. And then I'll be also giving a similar talk at a gardening symposium at Glen Laurel uh, Resort here, uh, actually not far away from us, just on the other side of Guide Town. And so I would love to come speak to your group if you're a group of master gardeners, if you're a garden club group, um, conservation minded folks, what, <coughs> excuse me, whatever. I, I love coming out and talking to folks. So uh, give me a shout if you're interested. And uh, with that, we'll see you next Monday. Bye.